After hearing a friend talk about it, I felt like trying out Splinter Cell Conviction. Not an obscure game by no means, but definitely a black sheep in a well-established series. With the Ubisoft server shutting down across a wide number of games, Conviction has little to offer unless you're willing to tinker with something like Zero Tier. And if you have friends also willing to tinker with Zero Tier. Even then, I can't say it works, as I haven't tried it quite yet. If you buy Conviction today, you'll get a short single-player campaign that's... Well, that's what we're here to talk about. A small disclaimer, Splinter Cell isn't optimized for operating systems past Windows 7. I had to scour the Steam forms for a fix that worked for me. There's tons of solutions, so there's no point in exploring them. You just gotta hope you find one that works. It also uses Ubisoft Connect, and that, of course, comes with its own pains, but it actually didn't affect the functionality of Conviction at all. Lastly, this game ran like crap at times. I didn't really seek out a fix because originally I had no plans of making this video. I was able to endure the frame drops because I recently just finished Call of Duty Big Red 1 on legit hardware and it was basically a PowerPoint presentation at times. So I'm kind of used to it after that. So if you see some awful performance, no, it's not your internet. No, YouTube did not kill my upload. It just ran like that. Since we're on the subject of frame rate, let's go ahead and get the visuals out of the way. This game released in 2010 on the Unreal Engine, I mean the LED Engine. This means we got some plastic looking textures and models, but other times it means we get good lighting and effects. It all looks good for 2010, the only issue I have with it is the style. Sam Fisher looks like Nathan Drake from the back. You also never get the franchise identifying black stealth suit. The MVGs are only present in the last half of the game, which means for the majority of the campaign you look more like Jason Bourne than Sam Fisher. But I mean, you know, whatever. Him looking like this is related to the plot, which we'll get to in a moment. The real weird character design is Grimm. For non-Splinter Cell fans, Grimm was Sam Fisher's technology advisor in the previous games. I guess that's the best way I can put it without going into plot and whatnot. They both work at Third Echelon, which is like a secret government organization, you know, doing stuff behind the scenes and whatnot. In this game, she looks like an infield agent, like she's part of the action. Side note, I swear this hair looks like an oversized wig. Anyway, Grimm used to look like this, and this, but in this game, she's this. And in the sequel, Blacklist, she looks like this. She's got the same thing Benjamin Button has, I suppose. Grimm looks cool, don't get me wrong, but it's just weird. Seems like a whole new character, I mean... Conviction takes place after the previous games. It's like a chronological order of games. So Sam got older, but they didn't age Grimm at all. That's weird. Besides that, visually this game looks pretty good. It just doesn't look like a Splinter Cell game, except for maybe some of the Tom Clancy locations like the White House and Washington Monument. About the only place that looks awful is this Middle East segment. Yeah, but we'll talk about more about this a little bit later. When it comes to the audio, it's all fantastic. Michael Ironsides is still voicing Sam Fisher as usual, and he's doing a good job considering what he has to work with. Let's get the plot out of the way. Splinter Cell is a Tom Clancy franchise, which means the story of each game is fairly predictable and at times very samey. Something something America, something something Russia or China, something something proxy war, something something plot twist. Conviction is about Sam Fisher leaving third echelon because his daughter died after being hit by a car. So he spent three years sort of just milling about. Then Grimm, your old co-worker from 3rd Echelon, calls you to get back into the game because something's going on. There's cutscenes where Sam's friend Vic is being interrogated and does a bunch of exposition dumps, but generally speaking, the plot is nothing super deep. There are twists, and there are turns, but the game ruins it by doing something I can't stand. You'll see a scene like Grimm holding Sam at gunpoint, and then he'll go back in time. I hate this so much. I complained about it when I talked about Sly Cooper 3. It's like, okay, I could probably piece some of the plot together now, and it also makes me lose a little bit of investment because it means any setbacks probably going to be resolved if you're in the halls of the White House later. I'm assuming Grimm's going to be alive through this whole game. Could be a misinterpretation for me, but I generally hate flashbacks and storytelling unless it's used to explain something, such as this Middle East segment I teased before. It's Vic talking about how he and Sam have a bond because of something they endured in the Iraq War. But at the same time, there's a part where they're like, Oh my god, I don't think we're gonna make it. The soldiers are approaching this. Well, you know very well that they're gonna make it. They're gonna make it! But speaking of the Iraq segment, I, I, I probably got all y'all's interest, so let's just talk about the gameplay. This is a Splinter Cell game. This right here. All this action and explosions. This whole sequence is interesting within the confines of conviction, but I'm sure on release, Splinter Cell fans saw this as proof of the death of a franchise. 
Conviction is the sixth game in the series, and it's nothing like the previous five. Conviction's action-packed, with stealth being more of like a suggestion, more so than something that you need to do, barring a mission where you have to remain undetected. It's very John Wick in nature. You arrive to a room, people rush in and try to kill you, and you take them out one by one. Comparing Conviction to the rest of the franchise would lower its rating for me. When I played this game, I pretended it was a spinoff for its own thing. And you know, I had fun. But it's not perfect. It's a cover shooter through and through with a little bit of stealth. It's more like touch and go stealth. 2010s was a time when stealth kind of evolved into something a little bit different. Here, when Sam gets spotted, it leaves this little trail of you like this little ghost of you and then that's where all the enemies will focus on and it's very easy exploitable you just have them see you, and then you walk around behind them and you shoot them all up this was very standard for a lot of ubisoft games around this time and it was pretty standard for stealth as a whole when it comes to the actual controls it's all standard there is no aiming down sights but you do have a focus aimed when you hold right click and then you can upgrade one of the handguns to have a laser sight, and it becomes fairly easy to make accurate shots. If you shoot consecutively, the bullets will fly wildly, but if you wait for a little bit, then that shot will not miss. Not sure if rifles and submachine guns are the same way, because I never used them. I did upgrade the UMP-45 just to have it on my back for looks. I blame Battlefield 3, but I went through a phase where I loved the UMP-45. It just, you know, looks cool, you know? Then I discovered the Vector, and now that's my favorite submachine gun. But yeah, this game was really easy on normal, which is what I played it on. So to give myself a little challenge, I only used handguns. I used handguns the entire time, except for the Middle East segment, because you were forced to use the AK-47. You can have one handgun, one secondary, and then you'll have a wide range of throwables. There's this kind of like sticky camera thing you can use, which I barely used if... If I don't find footage for it, it's because I couldn't figure out where I actually accidentally threw it. Because when I did use it, it was because I ran out of frag grenades, and that's what was next. But yeah, you could throw it out and like make noise with it if you wanted. You also had EMP grenades, frag grenades. You had this really cool little device where it was called the portable EMP, where it was like the EMP grenade except for it was immediate, and it was around your person. So if guys were coming up on top of you, getting really close, and you could just do the portable EMP and call it a day. The last tool in your arsenal is the darkness. When the game goes monochrome, that's your indication that Sam is hidden. Some games have like HUD details, like an eyeball or a light or something. Conviction decided to say, you know what? When you're in darkness, we're just going to saboteur it. And me saying that, it does, this game really did make me want to play saboteur when it would go from monochrome to color in, in quick succession. It's a cool idea, I suppose. Um, it gets a little distracting from here to there, but, I mean, it's the most effective way to show that you are in complete darkness. The most intense moments are times where the enemies turn all the lights on. The developers do a good job of making you feel vulnerable when this stuff like this happens, because the AI will now be able to see you with no problem. Of course, you can shoot out lights and throw EMPs and stuff like that, but in the moment, it kind of freaks you out. It's kind of cool how the game explains this mechanic, too. Sam has a memory of putting his young daughter to bed, and this daughter looks absolutely horrifying. But this whole conversation is about how light is not necessarily where the boogeymen are. You might be the boogeyman. <laughs> this memory also explains the new execute mechanic. Basically, some dudes broke in, then you tag the enemies and press execute, and Sam will just shoot them with no issues whatsoever. I rarely use this, to be honest. I kind of forgot it was there. But yeah, the combat be good, even if the level design is devoid of any options besides forwards. Even at times when you find additional pathways, it still leads to the same door. There's only one way to really go. Perhaps my biggest gripe is that lack of options. Levels might as well be corridors, and at times they're actual literal corridors. There's also zero non-lethal options. I feel like not giving a single non-lethal option goes against what Splinter Cell is as a series. Sam Fisher's not a mass murderer or a one-man army. He's meant to be a secret agent. No attention. Getting the job done with as little noise and attention as possible. However, I guess since Conviction is a whole different plot, it's okay. I just find it weird seeing Sam kill an entire army of people. But like I said while playing, I just told myself it's not Splinter Cell, it's not Splinter Cell, it's not Splinter Cell, and it was effective. The last little bit of gameplay mechanic was actually a big selling point at the time, which is the interrogation mechanics. Anytime you come up to a guy you need to get some information from, you can like bash him against the environment objects. You just pull him to where you think that you're going to have an interaction, press the interrogate button, and Sam punches him or, you know, throws his head into a TV.
it's cool the first couple times and then you realize that it's kind of like bosses in mario it's usually three interrogation bits and it's over i could be wrong about that it could be misremembering it but it just seemed like yep there was the three or four and now we're gonna move on but yeah it's a short game my footage is around four hours it doesn't waste your time and it's pretty fun assuming you get it for 4.99 and not 20 bucks i'd say it's worth it and I can imagine how disappointing this would have been full-priced back in the day for diehard Splinter Cell fans. Check it out, or don't. I don't care. There's so many games, we will never be able to play all the ones we want to. So if you're kind of on the fence, then don't worry about it. But if you're thinking, man, I kind of want to play it, it looks cool, then I'd say go for it. Speaking of time being wasted, the game's credits are 20 minutes long. That's not an exaggeration, I timed it. It was about 21 minutes. I thought it was never going to end. <laughs> this is stupidly long. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the future. I was going to do a video about Big Red 1, but I didn't like how the script kept turning out. But hey, play that too if you want. It's pretty dang fun. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of whatever that may be.